Hello, people. How you doing today? I'm Lee Cole 3 with my partner, James Proctor. James, how are you doing today? Hey, doing really well, Lee. How are you today? I cannot complain at all. Before we start, I want to talk real quick. I'm just going to... No, actually, I'll wait on that. Okay, first of all, please sub to this channel if you have not. Please hit the like button uh, and also the reminder button so you know when the shows are coming up. And... Uh, but we're going to talk today, um, and I'm going to play a little part of, uh, of Mikey uh, Scars and uh, uh, R.J. Rogers' show. And um, he said something very interesting, and we're going to get into it a little bit. This is the, I find it very, very odd, if not odd, um, wondering why two men who are around the same gangsters, one thinks that Sammy Gavano was behind the murder of uh, uh, of uh, DeChico, Frankie DeChico, and the other one th says no. Right. And we're just going to break it down a little bit, and you guys can decide. We're going to give you the evidence that we have or what we pulled up, and uh, you guys can decide. But here we go. I'm going to put up this first and uh, play this, people, and then we'll get on from here. That's like I said, John, knowing John's personality, he wouldn't want to be sitting somewhere else. I could be wrong. Tony could be right. Did Sammy know about the hit on Frankie the Chico? No way. I think Sammy knew about that hit. No way. Now, somebody brought up an interesting point that I thought it just made my mind think for a moment, but that Sammy had this great relationship with Gaspipe. Mm -hmm. And you later on find out that that was where the hit came from, from mm -hmm. Frankie. And then Joe, and then Frankie's family, I think Joe, was it Butter that said? You yeah. think Sam? I'm here because I want the public to know the truth, the truth about yeah. what this man Sammy Bill really is. Gravano. That's right. I know him since he's been a little kid. I watched him grow up and I seen the things he'd done in life. And I know his one purpose in life was to be a greedy looking lion, rat, stool pigeon that he really is. Shock you when you find out that he was cooperating? Sure, it shocks me because I know that that had to be in his mind to be that way and to get all the money he wanted. He's very the poor man. I know this man, John Gotti, since he was a kid too. Hmm. I respect the floor he walks on. I think he's one of the best gentlemen I ever seen in my life. He's oh. the man who killed my nephew, Frankie DiCicco. In my heart, I know it. Why are you saying that Sammy did this? I know he was dying to get my nephew's job of being with the union local 282 and all the rest of the locals and all the money that he's been making. And he knew he couldn't go any further unless my nephew was out of the picture. So. Gas pipe connection with Sammy. Now I'm not at all saying it. I'm asking the viewer a question. So I'm just going to, I'm getting the answer. Do you think, and I know your answer because we discussed it, but do you believe that Sammy the Bull could have been involved with the killing of Frankie the Chico? And if not, why? No way. There's, there's no way he was involved. Um, I seen Sammy after the fact. I seen his anger, his rage, uh, his sadness. Uh, to a point where Frank and uh, no, there's no way he was involved. And you know, I am in a uh, I could have adopted that theory, couldn't I have? And bash Gravano even more would have been pretty good, especially coming from us right now, right? Uh, it, it, it could have lent more credibility to that argument, especially if the butter went on TV during the course of the trial and uh, made that assertion. That uh, you know, that, that was just the, when Butter went on TV that time. That was just to dirty up the jury, if they heard it. Uh, food for thought for them that maybe Gravano left that murder out. So, but uh, no, there's no, there's no way. I'm gonna tell you why. <clears throat> for the, I didn't see all gas pipes, three o twos, or anything that was reduced to writing by uh, agents and or prosecutors. I didn't see it. I would love to see it. I think the world would love to see it. Maybe somebody can get a FOIA request, Freedom of Information Act, and we can see this. Um, but it is part of history. It was a bombing. It was a major crime, right? And 
Yes, five does not, does not, as far as we know, the world knows, say anything about gas and Sammy being involved. That gas talked to Sammy about it. That would have come out. Guess that how it comes out is guess admits to the bombing. Why would guess blame Sammy for the drug boat? Be a part. I got I got a little information about that also that we'll talk, speak about in the future. Um, but uh, he does talk and put him in with the drugs, right? Again, don't mute. Okay, so what did you think about what you just heard? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that I never thought about, I'd, I'd, I'd heard the clip or, you know, Joe DiCicco, and this is the first time I realized that this was actually uh, conducted, that interview was conducted in 1992. And that's the first time I that I had ever heard uh, that the reason that Do Joe DiCicco might have uh, did the interview was because he wanted to discredit Sammy because Sammy at the at that time was uh, an informant, active informant, and he was testified in the trial. So that was something that was interesting that never crossed my mind in, until now. And, you know, it's obviously that uh, you could see it. Joe DiCicco was, was angry. That's his brother. But, you know, for me, when you see what um, you look at Mikey's uh, scars and what you see there is someone that was in that life around those people but at the same time he is looking at more um objective in my opinion now now see he, here's what i find very uh different about this uh jody chico was around the same people that Mikey Scars was around he was around Jackie to nose now let's face it wasn't Jackie to nose wasn't he uh the, um, pretty much in charge of uh, um, Michael DiLonardo. Yeah, yeah. So he was the uh, captain. Uh, yeah, he was uh, who Michael uh, reported up through. Okay, so he's the captain that Michael reports to. Joe's close to him. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're about to, you know, and so, but they both have totally different philosophies. As for uh, him doing it to dirty up the jury, maybe, but he continued to say that afterwards. You know, or he, he continued to say that years later. So mm -hmm. it wasn't like he just said it th at that point. Okay. Um, that was always out there. Um, but, you know, the reality is, uh, oh, by the way, people, I got that clip from Mikey Scar's uh, channel. Uh, they let me use stuff that's not on their paywall. So um, out of consideration, please uh, go, su uh, go sub to them or watch their stuff. Uh, even go to their... Uh, Patreon, it's really good stuff. And I just want to let people know that. Okay. But there's a lot more behind this whole thing with this this mur uh, th this killing of uh of Frankie DiCicco, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot involved in it, obviously, you know, when you start talking about uh, you know, Michael was talking about the about gas pipe and then uh, you know, we know about the chin, and then there's also also what we'd brought up in a previous um, video about, you know, there was some internal strife against, um, you know, John Gotti uh, with uh, Jimmy, you know, with Jimmy Brown. And, and we're going uh, to read Brown. that. We're going to we're going to read that. I'm going to read that right now because you came up with this you, uh, at the crime library. Criminal, uh, basically, this is what the crime yeah. library. This is what a lot of people say happened. Yeah, yeah. It's, exactly. it's going to be up to people out there to decide what they think is true. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we know that Mikey Scars uh, does not like Sammy and thinks that Sammy lies about a lot of stuff and he calls him out on it. Right. And so this would have been the opportunity, like Mikey said, to call him out on this too. Sure. Jump right on the bandwagon. But he did not. Right. Uh, but I'm going to read this. Okay. So here's what, what it says here. Gotti and DiCicco made a point of visiting various family capos on their home ground, something Castellano considered beneath him. On Sunday, April 16, 1986, just days after the G Gia Colon Rico trial began, Gotti was supposed to meet DiCicco and uh, uh, Frankie DiCicco and Gravano at uh, Jimmy Brown's Veterans and Friends Social Club in Bensonhurst. In addition to crew members of uh, Bobby Brown Fiela's 
and Dan Marino's, who, they, who, who was also in attendance. Outside the club, several hundred feet away, a hit team that was organized by the Chin and the Lucchese higher ups, uh, gas pipe Casso, uh, was ready for action. A bob, bomb hidden in, in the paper bag was placed under DiCicco's automobile. What the killers did not know was that Gotti had telephoned the club earlier to let them know he couldn't make it and that Tichico to, and for Tichico to meet later that day at the Ravenite. While members of the group were discussing family business, Frank Bellino, a member of the Lucchese family, arrived to discuss legal problems with Tichico. Bellino wanted the telephone number of an attorney, and Tichico had the lawyer's business card in the glove compartment of his Buick Electra. As the two men approached the car, Frankie DeChico commented about the bag that was under the, uh, w it was visible under the vehicle. That's probably a bomb under my car, he joked with Bellino. Did you ever hear that before? Uh, I've never heard that before. That was um, the first time I've heard that. Yeah, I've never heard that before, that he joked about the bag under there. So that's something I like to uh, see what Mikey Scars would say about that, if, if he ever heard that story before. Right. As the men approached the car, Herbert Blue Eyes Pate, an associate with the Genovese family, who years later was was ratted out by Anthony Casso as the hitman, was given a si the signal. He waited for as the Chico sat down on the passenger side and opened the glove compartment. Then he detonated the bomb. Gang members, except Fiala and Marino, rushed from the social club to the scene of carnage. Gravano pulled his dying friend away from the burning automobile. That's according to Gravano, by the way, people. Uh, both victims were taken by police van to Vic Victory Memorial Hospital, where DeChico was pronounced dead. Gotti moved quickly to gather the troops, all the family capos, and the crew members were ordered to attend the wake for showing of strength and unity. Unaware who was behind the murder, Gotti still believed he was in good working relationships with the Chin. The Chin other, thought otherwise and was not finished with his effort to remove Gotti from leadership of the Gambino family. However, according to Gravano, uh, the Chin wasn't the only one plotting. In 19, okay, well, we don't, I don't want, that's going to be another video. I don't, I don't yeah. want to go beyond that. Okay, so tell me, give, give me, give me your thoughts of what I just read. Well, I mean, th this is the, the story, you know, everything that you read is, is what I've heard. It's the things that I would say that most historians uh, find is the, um, the story, the truth. The only part that I, I'd never heard of was, you know, where Frank Bellino had, had said the quote about there's probably a bomb under my car. I don't believe it, Frank. I've never heard Frank DiCicco had said that before, but everything else I, you know, definitely had, had, had heard before. I know, obviously we, you know, we have Sammy's take that he, he pulled the body out and put it in, in the van. And then we've heard other side that was, a, yeah. A, a and, and, we're, that's that, and we, we got our opinion in that in another video. Right. Exactly. But yeah, I mean, this is probably what I would call the, the, the version of the story that is, most well known. So John Gotti was under the assumption that the Chin and him were on the good terms, and they really weren't. The Chin wanted them dead, but they also went to Casso before the hit, and Casso had no problem with them doing the hit, did he? No, they didn't. And so, hey, if you go back, you know, supposedly Frank Tachico had spoke with um, with Gaspipe earlier. You know, before you know when they were playing the hit on Paul Castellano, and you know, Gaspipe. Uh, said that yeah it was okay or that they would uh, back this and so you know the the family had went to uh, I'm talking about the Gambinos uh, went to uh, three of the four families my understanding and you know they didn't go they knew that the Chin and the Genovese were not going to support this hit but they felt they had the the other three and so uh, what was interesting is that you know uh, Corallo was the Lucchese boss at the time, and and he he's very old school. He was close to the chin, and and so you know he said you know this isn't acceptable, and so you know they they pushed it to gas pipe to execute the this um, this murder. And, and so, gas pipe was one of those guys. He was like uh, Scarpo. If he came looking for you, 
you had an issue because usually they got their man. Yeah, right. exactly. And they wanted to do this a certain way. They wanted. So the thing was, is that, as we know, that uh, they wanted to make it think that it was the Zips that did it. Uh, you know, they had tried to go to uh, folks in Cleveland because Cleveland at the time was uh, had folks that were doing these. They were bombing um, the whole city. Mm-hmm. They were killing each other with bombs. Exactly. Yeah. And so they wanted to blame, you know, that, you know, they were trying to uh, blame it on that and. And so anyway, you know, the gas pipe uh, was was behind it and as is what most most people um, believe. And and then there was a, a plan in place, supposedly, that uh, Dane Marino and uh, Jimmy Brown, um, who okay, you got Danny Marino just right there. Yep. Okay, I'm sorry to cut you off here. But no, I'm, no, I'm go ahead. Right but but there's something that you you're, you're about to mention now, and we want to remember that Danny Marino and Jimmy Brown Fiella. It's very important to remember that, and they said that, and, and this when the bombing happened, and this is probably something else. Uh, Mikey Scar is going to answer. When the bombing happened, they didn't come running out. Right. They stayed in the social club, uh, and a lot of people believe that it was set up that they were going to take over the family. Yeah, um, exactly. And uh, the, along. And the, Thomas um, Gambino would be the the third guy. So you had the chin here. He was he already had the new heads of the families and everything. But John Gotti messed it up that day by not coming. Uh, it makes you wonder uh, how history would have been if he did show up that day. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's a that's a good point. And and then. Uh, you know, as, as far as this conspiracy, you've, you've heard, of, you know, my understanding was that that they that they wanted to take out uh, Sammy, uh, John Gotti and uh, Frank DeChico. And then I believe also uh, Frankie Lino and one other person that was involved in the um, the hit on Big Paul. And so uh, they ended up the, the thing is, is that they were planning on doing was was trying to get there's two different versions one was they were going to get uh sammy gravano and frank DeChico first and then put a kind of a noose around Gotti's uh neck and then take him out last and then the other one was that you know they were going to do it this way you know take out i disagree with that get i disagree totally with that get sammy first because uh John Gotti wasn't the type of guy he was going to let you put a noose around his neck. No, no, no. Uh, but I'm just that, saying yeah, that. Was that just, sounds. Is that a Sammy story? No, that's a story they, that it yeah. wasn't. It, that wasn't a Sammy story. That was a story that uh, came from uh, some of the, uh, I believe, from um, Gas Pipe himself. He, you know, and he said it a couple of different ways. That's the problem. Is Gas Pipe isn't the most reliable either. No. And, so that was yes, that was pipe, yes, pipe was friends with uh, with um, Sammy. He probably could have reached out to Sammy and said, "Hey, Sammy, you know, stay in play." But you know, there was a, well, you, we have to remember too that you know if if they took out John Gotti, let's say, mm-hmm. there would be a lot of stuff out there, a lot of money, a lot of unions, and everything. Uh, and it kind of in a way, Sammy controlled a lot of that stuff too. So maybe it would have made sense for them to take Sammy out because then you have. Uh, the Genovese family and the um, uh, Gamb- Gambino family splitting up the, the rewards. Well, and that is part of it, too, is that, you know, supposedly at the beginning, Sammy was uh, on the list to be hit. Then it was supposedly later he was removed from that list. You know, I don't know if he was ever removed from the list, but that's, you know, you hear that story from Sammy that, you know, the chin liked him and they didn't, um, they took him off the hit list. Which- no, Sammy Sammy was at home. He was planning on jumping through a window and assassinating the chin, yeah. according, to, according to Sammy. Right. You know, so, you know, everybody loves Sammy. Sammy was just known as a good guy out in the street. He didn't hurt nobody. He was kind of popish, <laughs> you know, according to Sammy. Right. But, you know, so in reality, we'll never know. But, you know, if Sammy was in that car, let's say, you know, history could have been so much different based on who was in that car. If it was oh, hey, yeah. if it was John Gotti and Chico together, forget it. You know, uh, my personal opinion is if they took out, say, say they took out John Gotti and they took out the Chico, but they did not take out Sammy Gavano. 
Sammy's going to know they're looking for him, and Sammy's going to reach out to get everything squashed, to, to settle. Yeah, and Sammy wasn't as powerful quite yet. So he had no. just gotten promoted to Capo. He had, you know, remember this was in, this was in April and of in 86, and he just, it was January of 86 when he got promoted to Capo. So the family was just getting organized. And at this point, Jimmy Brown was, uh, was much more powerful in the eyes of the, you know, the old timers than, you know, any of these guys. And, and they lost their power over the next few years, kind of, didn't they? Uh, Jimmy Brown and Fiella. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They had some, they definitely had some, some issues. And then there was a lot of suspicion, even, you know, Junior Gotti later, he, he, he didn't trust uh, Jimmy Brown or, or Marino. Because, he did not like Danny Marino at all. No, uh, not at all. And, and, you know, there were three, and Joe Watts. And Joe um, Watts, yeah. It was, it was, he didn't like Danny Marino. He didn't like Bobby Brown. And he did not care for Joe Watts. Or um, Jimmy Brown. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So, which is, you know, I find that stuff very interesting. So, Woody, okay, so what is your, say, okay, say you, Mr. Proctor, Mr. Mm -hmm. Detective. Okay. What would, if you had to sit down and say what happened, tell us what you think happened. Yeah, I, I don't personally I I don't personally believe that I believe Joe DeChico was uh you know, that's his brother. I believe that he just was uh he was angry at Sammy. He No, was that was angry. his nephew. That was his nephew. I mean his nephew, yeah. But I meant what I was saying is that I meant that uh he was angry about what happened to his nephew. He was upset that uh Sammy had flipped. And, and so, you know, I felt like it was that there's some possibility that this was about uh, trying to, you know, tamper with uh, the credibility of, of Sammy. But, you know, I think probably Joe believed it. I don't think he made it up in his head. I think that's just what he believed. Well, at the same time, uh, the story that I hear uh, in the video with um, Mikey Scars, that's, uh, that's, what I believe that's something I've heard. That's what I've researched. That seems more pl plausible in my opinion. I, I, I believe that too. I, you know, in the beginning I didn't, you know, yeah. you know, if you come on here and you don't really uh, understand the workings and do a lot of research and stuff, but as I've done more and more research, I think that Mikey is actually right on this. I think, you know, he, and that's the one good thing about, you know, Mikey being in that period of time. And yeah. uh, I think Mikey it was said, two years later, maybe if, you know, if this was like a, maybe two years later, I could have definitely seen um, Sammy being behind it because, you know, Sammy by that point had gained a lot of power. He had the unions, he had, he had all of that. And, you know, you, you saw that he was killing all of his friends and, and, people that he worked with so and, Dan, and sammy was a fox mm -hmm. sammy sammy would have uh weaseled his if god forbid if if john Gotti was in that car sammy would have weaseled his way out of it and, and this is what i would like to ask mikey scars what would have happened to the family and his opinion if Gotti was taken out that day that's what i would like to ask i would say mikey can you answer that question for us um, what do you think? You think that's a good question for Mikey? Yeah, I think it's a good question. My opinion on it, if if that had if that had happened, and let's say if it well, if that had happened, if it was just John Gotti, then of course then it would uh, be Gotti and Chico because I'm oh, guessing okay. if both of them were driver, I, I I think that would have yeah. been his driver. They would probably would have went there together. Yeah, okay. Yep. And so if if both of them were taken out, then most likely, I believe the scenario with uh, Jimmy Brown uh, taking over is, is plausible. Maybe they would have had one of the old timers uh, like uh, Joe Gallo or one of those, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, hold over for a while. But at that point, if that happened, then the Genovese would have definitely had a lot of, of hold over that Gambino family. And I just I just really believe that they would have went down the path of. A, a Brown because he he had a lot of power. He was uh, one of the most powerful capos. He was ambitious. You know, you had Dane Marino, and then 
you know, they would have probably wanted to get someone that was like uh, Thomas Gambino that was, uh, you know, uh, these well, were the old guys. The, here's the issue. Here's the issue. If they took John out at that moment, I believe at that time, Eugene was still on the street. Gene Gotti. He was still on the street. I mean, uh, John Jr. was on the street. I mean, if that happened, I wonder what would have happened there. Yeah, John, uh, well, Jr. at that point was really young. So this was kind of, you know, I don't think he would have been. Well, Gene was in his prime, let's say. Gene was, yeah. So do you think that, well, the problem is, I think if, if that happened, they would have wanted to purge all the, they would have wanted to purge out the that faction. So basically, they would have purged uh, Gene Gotti as well. I don't think Gene Gotti. Well, you got Carniglia. Been... You got mm-hmm. guys that good luck purging. There's been a war. They it, been it ain't war. going down too easy. I just don't see it happening easy. No, no. You have had a big war between the factions in Queens and the faction in Bensonhurst. That would have been a, a you know, those two factions would have been at war, and and they were both. Very uh, powerful. And Gene, Gene would be like, you, 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 you murdered my brother. I'm, I'm not going to let you get away with that. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I've never, you know, I don't know how much of a leadership that Gene Gotti had, you know, if he had the ambition to be a, and you a had boss. quack quack out there. I mean, you had yeah, guys yeah. out there that were serious dudes. I mean, they were real serious guys. And you had that, you know, and, and we talked about this. You had those uh, those guys from that, um, the Bergen boys. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. That, that was a powerful. The, those guys were killers. Those guys uh, knew the streets. They, you know, they, I mean, it would have, uh, you know, they would have been able to, you know, do well. It, I think it would have been a matter of what alliances each, each of the factions could have gotten. You know, that's where it would have came down to, in my opinion. And so... Yeah. so because you have some people that say, oh, it's the life you got to accept it. I just can't picture Gene Gotti accepting John Gotti being killed. Well, I, I don't think so either. You know, uh, I, I really don't. So, you know, and I think that that stuff that Mikey Scars would, that would be a great show for him, I think. Because, uh, what you know, the, what would have happened? What would have been dramatic? Because once they they say they say they blew up the car and John Gotti was in it with uh, Frankie. Once mm-hmm. they did that, these guys are going to know that they're going to come looking for them too. So they're going to, as they as they say, go to the mattresses. Yeah, they hit the mattresses. Yeah, I mean, because at that point you have had a a, a big a, a big war, and you know the you know we knew the Lacases and the. Genovese were together uh, at that point. The Columbos were kind of doing their thing, and then you, and then you had the the family of the Bonanos that had went through all the Donnie Brasco stuff. So they weren't even on the commission at the time. So it'd been very interesting, but you know, it would have been a it'd been a big war. And yeah, they thought uh, there was they thought there were a lot of bodies in the trunk. Can you imagine how many more bodies would have been in the trunks? I'm telling, yeah, exactly. This was exactly. the mid '80s. This was this was like the prime of the mafia. Exactly, and the thing is that you know, as powerful as uh, Jimmy Brown and Marino and all those were, I'll tell you, you don't want to discount the the Bergen guys. I wouldn't. No, mm-hmm. no, they. You couldn't. You couldn't discount them. No, because these guys. You know, some of these guys were killers. They would. They. You would have to kill them. You would have to kill yeah. them. If you wanted Carniglia, yeah. you had to kill him. You had to kill his brother. Uh, you know, there's just like a ten, to, ten of them guys were very powerful that would be running around uh, in the middle of a war. So that's it. You know, I just find it very interesting. Then you yeah, I'd love to Jack- hear his part of it. Yeah, uh, and then you I'd love- Jackie, the, Jackie the Nose, who was very mm-hmm. loyal to John. I mean, they did every they were together all the time. So you know, after he they became they bonded. Mm-hmm. So it's just, and the Chicos were behind uh, John Gotti. If they, so you had the two brother, uh, the the two brothers that were behind him. So you, you, they make it sound simple, like oh, we would have taken out Gotti, we would have taken out the Chico, and we just take over. No, that would not have happened. Yeah, and they did. And I'll tell you, the Chicos, you know, they were very well respected as well. And so, 
And yeah, they, were that, the, they were pissed that their brother was just killed. Oh, yeah. They would not and have. The yeah. And the nephew. Yeah. They would not have uh, just went along with uh, with Brown. They wouldn't have done that. They would have, uh, you know, and that would have gotten some of the Brooklyn faction to go along with the with the Queens, you know, with the Bergens. So. I think there would have been a good chance you could have found Danny Marino and Jimmy Brown in trunks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they weren't. I mean, Brown obviously could have, uh, you know, he wasn't, he was an earner. You know, I didn't never hear of him himself being a killer. You know, it'd been interesting what would have happened with Joe Watts at this point, which side he would have picked because, you know, he is definitely a capable associate. Yeah. And, and you have, you know, and if that, and this, it's just history that, you know, it's like saying what happened if somebody got a base set up the middle and they won the World <laughs> Series when instead of losing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, what happens if the final out by Mariano Rivera was caught and did oh, yeah. roll through right. to the outfield right. and Arizona won the same same crap? But you yeah, know, World War II, it, it, it's history. Yeah, yeah, you know, we could talk about history, but it's I, I just find it fascinating history because and people tell you tell us below here when you leave your comments, what do you think would have happened if? They did take John Gotti out and the Chico at the same time. Just say it happened. How would it have changed history of the Mo uh, of the Gambino family of the mafia? Because the Genovese and the Gambinos were the most powerful families by far. Mm -hmm. And uh, what would have happened? And you know, eventually they're all going to go to prison anyway. But that was the '80s and the '90s. A lot of stuff was going on. Oh yeah, I, I agree with you, and and yeah, I I would think that'd be saying interesting to hear from you know Mikey's perspective, being that he was around those guys. That'd been interesting. Okay, let me just put this through here, people. Okay, so people, just so you know, uh, let me pull something up here real quick. Okay, people, just so you know, um, this does not come out good right now on 70% of people use phones, as we know, and mobile devices. Uh, this uh, Our website will be adjusted to our mobile versions within the next week. Um, so if you pull it up, it's going to look like crap, but the mobile version will be out within one week. And if you want to, uh, and we've gotten a lot of people, we've gotten... A lot of people coming in and going down here and filling this out right here. Fill out this form. And once you email your your, your information, you'll be receiving a gift from us. Uh, and we'll contact you back, ask you for your address, and we'll mail it out to you, just so you know. And uh, and just basically tell us that you're part of our website now because our website's going to be connected to our Patreon page also, and we're going to have our YouTube. Uh, and that's our plan with that. So people, if you want to take care of that, I'd appreciate it. Uh, and what else? Please subscribe, hit the like button, the reminder bell. Thank you very much. And on top of that, if you want to help support this channel, uh, you, you know, we have cash apps. You can also hit the heart. You can donate any way you want. If you don't, no problem at all. Yeah. Okay. So you have anything to say to close this out? Yeah, just one thing is that there's no obligation if you sign up. So you can go to the website. You you could sign up and and the gift. And we're going to send you no free gift. What do you have yeah, to lose? No obligation yet. There's no. It doesn't cost money to go to the site or any of that. So um, we just you know want to give you a gift. So uh, just fill that out and we'll we'll definitely get that to you. Okay, people, thank you very much. We appreciate it. I hope that we entertained you with this. And below here, if you could tell us what you think about what would happen, we'd appreciate it. James, thank you so much. Thank appreciate you. It. Appreciate Everybody it. Everybody take care. Thank you. Take care.